New details are emerging on senior counsel Abu Nasir Abdullah's petition that he has filed in Arusha, where he wants Kenya to pay him 200 million Kenya shillings as a result of the ban by the Supreme Court. Senior counsel from the new details emerging is alleging that some four Supreme Court judges were bribed between Kenya shillings 200 million to 226 million to overturn William Ruto's win in 2022. Before we dig deep into that, let's have a look at a post shared out by senior counsel about two days ago. Ahmed Nasir Abdullah senior counsel, last week when President Uhuru called out traitors who will not benefit from their trade, many Kenyans wrongly thought he was referring to politicians. That is why Honorable Muradi quickly issued a clarification. Those who know what happened in September 2022 will tell you that Uhuru's ire was probably directed at four notorious members of one arm of government. So senior counsel upon Uhuru Kenyatta talking of some traitors, he very fast tweeted this, and in this tweet, he seems to be targeting some four Supreme Court judges. I want us to dig deep into this, considering the new details of the petition he has filed in Arusha. If you are watching us but you have not yet subscribed, subscribe, give this video a like. Let's continue. Let's have a look at an interesting story captured by Kenya Insights. Under particulars of incompetence, corruption, and incompetence by Supreme Court judges, Mr. Abdullahi claims that four out of seven judges were paid between 1.5 to 2 million US dollars, that shillings 200 to 266 million each to overturn the election of William Ruto that had been challenged by Raila Odinga, but were however unable to deliver. Four out of the seven members of the full bench of the Supreme Court that had the presidential poll petition by Raila Odinga challenging the results of the August 9, 2022 presidential election Elections which pitted William Root against members of Kenya's two elite and most powerful political families accepted bribes of between 1.5 to 2 million US dollars each but were unable to influence the outcome of the verdict rendered on 5th September 2022 by which the Supreme Court unanimously upheld William Ruto's win. He says, and it continues, he goes further to explain how each of the judges were bribed and how the cash was delivered. Judge A accepted a bribe that was delivered at Judge A's home in Nairobi by a very powerful politician. Judge B accepted bribes from three individuals the son of a deceased leader, a retired governor, and an influential businesswoman. Judge C took a bribe from a member of the National Intelligence Service, NIS, who subsequently left employment of the said service. Judge D accepted a bribe from a member of parliament. Initially, Judge D wanted the bribe to be given to his wife, but later changed his mind. Amin Nasir claimed in the suit. That's what <clears throat> the senior counsel is alleging. And in our previous videos, this is a topic we've been discussing. And if you look at senior counsel's posts in the recent days, he has been pointing fingers towards Martha Kome, 
Philomena Mwilu, the, the Deputy Chief Justice, Joki Ndungu, and Smoky Mwanjala. If keenly look at his posts, he seems to be targeting those four judges and is claiming that those are the ones who are bribed to overturn William Ruto's win. But the ironical bit about it, senior counsel has sued Kenya in Arusha. He wants to be paid 200 million from the taxpayers. Yes, the head of the government is William Ruto. I find it very ironical that senior counsel is trying to sue the Kenyan government headed by Ruto and at the same time he seems to be sympathetic to Ruto that some people wanted to deny William Ruto the victory. So I'm seeing a contradiction here. And this just exposes that senior counsel might be very, very confused. And if you look at what happened in 2022, it's very clear that the Supreme Court judges, there was some external influence that influenced their rulings. And it's almost certain and very clear where that external influence came from. If there's a new brigade actually bribed the four, the four could have ruled in their favor. The mere fact that they never ruled in favor over Zimio can explain where the bribe came from. And for those who have been following this story very keenly, I'm seeing a very high possibility where the senior counsel himself might have attempted to bribe the four judges he claims were bribed, but the four judges refused. So he thinks that they refused because Azimio's wing had already bribed them. It's somehow certain and very clear that if at all any side bribed, then the side that was declared the winners most definitely did bribe. When Uru Kenyatta was referring to traitors, he meant the politicians and the institutional traitors. They were Fula Chibukatis and the Mother Comis in that they allowed themselves to be bribed. So I'm seeing a senior counsel who is not being honest with Kenyans here. Mm -hmm. This man is just trying to maybe seek attention and to blackmail the four Supreme Court justices. And from where I sit, senior counsel is not in any way better than the four Supreme Court justices He's saying we're bribed. In the eyes of a majority of Kenyans, the, the entire Supreme Court is corrupt. Senior counsel, too, is also corrupt. So it's just a case of a kettle calling the pot black. Kenyans don't trust senior counsel. Kenyans don't trust the Supreme Court. And that's why I've also been maintaining that... As long as Martha Kome and her bench are still in office, they are killing the independence of the judiciary. Already they are being seen as corrupt. So if they insist that they must continue being in office, they are eroding the confidence Kenyans have on the judiciary. And if Martha Kome maybe is listening to me, Madam, just do the honorable thing, resign, and let your bench also resign. Kenyans have lost faith in your leadership. The best thing, therefore, to do is to resign to save the image of the judiciary. Let me stop it there, ladies and gentlemen. If you are watching us but you have not yet subscribed, subscribe, give this video a like. In case you may want to support our forum, contact me through that number below. That's our MPESA number. Let's meet in our next video. Thank you. Sioni shida ya usaliti mwingi sana huku. Hawa ni watu ukiwaongelesha vizuri 
mtapelekana na hawa vizuri sana na watawasaidia kwa kazi zenu usaliti huko upande mwingine staki sijui usaliti ni mwingi sana lakini kwa wasaliti tunawaambia hata Judas alisaliti Yesu lakini hiyo mahela aliiwacha akaenda akatafuta kamba it is servant leadership not leadership to be served